More from Jay Miller on the social aspect of the tech industry. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile, the makers of world class software. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more and download your free demo. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is part two in a two-part conversation with Jay Miller about a number of things, including his position on Mac Voices Live, as well as a social view of the tech industry and how it may or may not be affecting your buying decisions and whether it should. Let's go back and hear from Jay. Um, no, I, you know, I don't, I, I use the word responsible. You took it a little bit different direction. I think we're both saying the same thing. You know, I, if, if I give somebody a scalpel, I would like to think that they will be responsible enough not to start with open heart surgery, maybe practice on a tomato or something first before, you know, you dig in. So, but unfortunately some, you know, that doesn't seem to have been what has happened over the past few years. And I don't see this as a political discussion. It's more of, it's, it's more a social discourse discussion. I, I think there's there's room for disagreement. The one thing, though, and, and you may or may not agree with this, but I may see company X do something that I find perfectly acceptable. I might oh. even find it to be something that I, I I I believe in. You might see it the other way and say this is this is completely unacceptable. So I'm writing a letter in saying yeah more, and you're saying uh, writing a letter in saying less or don't. And that's where I feel like sometimes one of the things I've loved about Mac Voices is we can get into borderline heated agreements. And at the end of the day, everybody's laughing and saying, yeah, you know, we're still friends. We just, it's almost an agree to disagree situation. And I think that's what we may have here, but I'm not sure. I, I think that in the best cases, what you should have is a company saying, we've made a decision, um, you know, to bring it to current events. You know, there's this discussion around Apple doing CSAM detection and, you know, having the conversation about whether or not they should be able to scan our photos for uh, potentially abusive material. And in my mind, I see, I see what they're doing. I love that they want to take the initiative to say we need to put a stop to this type of material from happening and all of these things. But I also do look at the other side of that if there's a slippery slope and that whole methodology. And once you've started doing one thing, it becomes easier and easier to do other things. So perhaps this isn't the best way to approach that. And I think that both people, you know, you can have people saying, yes, I agree with this decision. You can have people say, no, I don't agree with this decision. And both people can be, well, it's not a matter of being right or wrong. It is, it is an opinion. And again, I don't think that there's anybody that at the end of the day was not going to purchase the latest phone or updates, the latest operating system because of this decision. And I think that that becomes a part of the question that doesn't get vocalized. And I think that that's one of the roles that I try to play on Mac Voices is like, okay, are we just going to ignore this whole thing happening and how it played out in order to just say, well, whether or not I think this is great or I think this is not great. And it's like, well, who cares whether it's great or not? At the end of the day, are you going to buy the device that uses it? And the answer in most cases will just be yes. Um, but I think that we often leave that part of the conversation out and we do because it's, it's uncomfortable. It is inherently uncomfortable. Fortunately for me, I have made a career off of having very uncomfortable conversations. <laughs> so my level of comfort in those uncomfortable areas is probably a little bit higher than others. You rabble rouser, you, um, <laughs> No, I listen, I, I I think that's an interesting way to look at it. I think we both have reputations as devil's advocates. Um, I, I never mind arguing the opposite side. Usually if if someone like you comes on and says, you know, and, and criticizes Apple, I will automatically take Apple's side, not necessarily because I agree with it, but because somebody needs to be there to argue with you and and, and point out the other side. 
And and that's usually the role, those are the roles we respectively play in some of those discussions. But there've been plenty of other times that, you know, I, I will take the, I'll, I'll flip it around and say, gee, I wish Apple could do something, do this a little better. You know, it's, mm-hmm. but I also feel like I'd, I try to be a realist. There are a lot of things that I wish Apple could do, but it just, it's not economically sound. And and I know before somebody says, yeah, I know they got all the money. I know, I hear that. <laughs> but there's you a reason. They, yeah, but there's a reason they have all the money. They have they have followed those principles along the way. To the the iPhone Mini is a, is a great example. We both know Brittany Smith, you know, worships the iPhone Mini, and she's got a very good reason for it. Uh, if and folks, if you haven't been watching Mac Voices live, you really should. But Brittany says her hand is small. She doesn't want a monster phone. Makes perfect sense to me that that that's the way she would want it. I also know people that have hands like gorillas, and they have trouble hitting the buttons on the small phones. So it cuts both ways. But at, at the end of the day, I, I use Apple, a mini myself. Do you? I didn't know that. Do you, Roy? Yeah, I I use a twelve mini, and and I'm actually not purchasing a phone this year. Um, mostly for budgeting reasons, I decided that a Herman Miller chair was more important than a, a phone that I'm going to replace in a year. Um, but for me, I wanted a smaller phone. I've, I've long held the idea that I want a phone that I can touch all four corners of the phone with one hand because then I have access. And if I'm working with one hand, especially being a parent to a small child, I'm often having to use just one hand. It, you know, that makes sense to me. That said, I've also been very, very upset with battery life. And, you know, I will probably, the next phone that I do get will be a step higher into a slightly larger phone, but not for the extra screen. It's actually just for the extra battery life. Hmm. Okay. Let's see, th- th- I mean, there you go. You know, it's, it's, it's different sizes fit different people and different things fit different people. I think it's, I think it's a, an interest. At the end of the day, I think it's interesting that when we have some of the discussions we've had, that um, I wish I had a prop. I don't have my phone right in front of me. So let's <laughs> pretend this is my phone. All right, that you know, I will look at this device and say, "What? What does it? What can it, can it do? What does it do for me? And does that pass my cost-benefit analysis for me?" You are absolutely, taking, and, and but but you are going five levels deeper, saying. Does the fact that you know this the plastic was made in Wyoming instead of Texas, you know how does that, how does that affect my buying decision? And I I seldom go that not not never but seldom go that deep or in that in that direction. Well, you you've mentioned and and this is you know again keeping it kind of relevant to what's happening you know in today's landscape, you know, Apple is doing more and more to reduce their carbon footprint. And as someone who works in a marketing department, there is a spin to that, that is people aren't going to care about the fact that we can, you know, put more devices on a truck with a smaller footprint, but they will care about, hey, this impacts the environment. And and that's where I, I think I've even mentioned this on on the show a couple of times of like, hey, the same enthusiasm that we have when Apple does a good thing, can we, can we look at that from a critical lens? Just as much as when Apple does something that we don't agree with, can we look at it critically and, and say like, okay, this was an easy decision to make. And that's why a lot of the decisions don't change my opinion. Apple saying we're going to try to be carbon neutral by you know 2030 means nothing to me because Apple is one company Yes, they sell a lot of phones, but we do a lot more damage, you know, from other things that we do other than just from when we buy our iPhone. And that's where, in my mind, the carbon footprint of how far my Apple, you know, Apple device went or how many trees it, you know, saved isn't necessarily the largest driving factor of whether or not I'm going to buy one. Now, for me, you mentioned that, hey, you know, when a company has all the money in the world, economic conversations should be easy. Well, I mean, any millionaire will tell you the way that you stay a millionaire is not spending your millions. Uh, but I will also say that there is a level of 
responsibility as someone who's a part of a lot of open source developer communities, as someone who is um, an advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion at my job and even outside of my job, one of the things that I often see are these conversations of, well, the budget has this much money left in it. Why don't we put it to this cause? And my argument has always been, instead of doing that with the money that's left, why don't we start with that? Why don't we get the good causes out of the way first? When I, when I get paid, the first thing that I do is pay all of my bills. Why? Because I like my house. I like my car. I like having electricity turned on. The next thing I do is say, how do I keep my family happy? And what I see is there are often a lot of people in the community that could benefit from the benevolence of these companies that make a lot of money, that make a lot of decisions, and they do it without thinking about those other people. So that would be like me getting a paycheck and spending it all on myself and saying, well, this helps me, this helps me, this helps me. Meanwhile, my wife and my daughter are like, um, we're kind of hungry too. And that's where I try to come in with, you know, hey, these are why these social issues matter to me. These are why I think that company X or company Y is doing a better job of this than this other company. No one out there can tell me that Microsoft isn't beating the brakes off of everybody with benevolence in terms of giving. Google is a close second. They have all the money in the world. They give it away way more. I think one of the things that they could do to be closer to where Apple is, is give less. But they've decided not to do that for whatever reasons. And you can hate Microsoft and you can hate Google for hardware or app decisions that they've made in the past. But one thing that I cannot deny is that I see a company that says, you know what, we're going to give hundreds of thousands of dollars to these organizations that normally don't get it because they normally don't get it. And to me, I go, you know what? I've never thought about buying a Surface Duo, but I'm going to look at it. I kind of I kind of like that they're they're looking at this group over here and paying attention to them and working for a good cause. Maybe I will look at their product. And I don't know if that's why they're doing it or not. But what I do know is when I look at it and I go, "Well, hmm, what is this other company that I'm heavily invested in doing?" Oh, they're they're not. They're not doing. They're not giving at the same level. They're not contributing. And that's not to say that they aren't. It's just some of the reasonings around it haven't been as vocalized. And again, we can we can go into the long discussion of who is to blame. Is it, hey, submit more press releases on the good things that you're doing? Is it, you know, hey, press, stop picking up all of the negative things that happen and start talking about some of the positive things? Because we know that that's always a problem. Or is it truly hey, company, maybe add some more to this area to your bottom line and stop looking at these initiatives as a, well, we'll just use whatever's left for that. Wow. I mean, you, in my mind, you just drew up a, a very, very difficult, complex equation for, for everyone involved. Uh, I mean, let's, let's start with the press. You know, am, am I going to pick up a, a, a press release and put on my front page that Apple you know, donated or Microsoft or Google, uh, forgive me, you know, but somebody, somebody put out, you know, a hundred million dollars um, for um, low income housing, you know, or am I going to pick that headline up that says Apple just made this technological advance to prevent you from being targeted by Pegasus? Or am I going to find, you know, something that said, you know, Apple left this door open accidentally and now we have a zero day exploit on the new iPhone. So you know, mm-hmm. pick pick one of those. So, so and that's and that's the that's the press's decision. Um, I find it fascinating that you know, and and this is maybe a lesson in marketing for somebody that because well, you use Microsoft, so I'll just throw it back at you that Microsoft is doing something you like from that particular angle, so you would consider buying their product, whereas otherwise you might not have. That's 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 another way. I've, at this point in the in time, advocating for social causes is good business. Supporting, you know, some of the causes you're talking about is is good business, you know. And I think Apple does a lot. I'm 
I'm not prepared. You know, I, you obviously have looked into it more than I have. I have no idea how Apple, Google, Microsoft, um, Adobe, you know, any of the other big players, Facebook, um, stack up with with uh, with spending on social causes, issues, organizations, whatever. Um, so I, I will I will cede that point to you, assuming that you are correct. If not, somebody will call us both out on it. Um, I, I'm I'm sure someone will find a, a hole in there. Well, this company did this much more or, or whatever. I, sure. I think a part of that is also that that's kind of that equity part. That's that, you know, I, people look at like, they say diversity and inclusion and the E is always left out. And like the E is important. It's equity. It's how, who are the stakeholders? Who are the people that get a benefit from this thing existing the way that it does? And, you know, as someone from the black community, there's a, a common saying, it's like, if there had been a black woman in the room, <laughs> because many times there's like a decision that was made that was like, I feel like they just forgot that, you know, people like us exist or, and, you know, we were talking about this with the, the driver's license issue of whether you think we should or shouldn't trust the police or whatever. There is an ongoing idea that people in the African-American community are not going to let an officer use their phone. And this is where Apple did a good thing because they said, the way that this is set up, you should never give the phone to a police officer. In fact, we're going to encourage you to make sure that you don't do that. It's not necessary. You don't need it. And what that does is that changes the conversation. And some of the podcasts that I listen to, like the Tech John, which is three three black individuals that are tech pundits talking about tech, all of them said, oh, Apple's doing this licensing thing. I'm never handing my phone to a police officer. Well, you don't have to. Oh, well, in that case, it's not that bad. And, it, and it's it's a matter of having someone in the room to have those conversations to say, hey, let's make sure that when we implement this, that we think about it in this way, because by not doing that, we alienate a large part of the community. It may not be the largest. And I think that that's often why it gets excluded is that the equity part isn't balanced across the board. And I don't think it ever will be fully balanced. It, it, that is the goal, but we're going to always be working towards that goal. But I think the closer that we can get to saying the people in the room, the people who have equity in the company are a good representation of the consumers of our company, not necessarily on a population by percentage scale. So if, you know, this, if a certain group only makes up 3% of the you know, population, you don't, you don't need 3% there. You say everybody that's a part has an equal seat at the table and has equal power to make those decisions and can voice those opinions. And I think that that's where, as we see the tech community caring about this more and more, we're going to see the decisions that are made be in that direction in a positive manner. However, what I'm worried about is the companies that are considered not draconic, but stuck in their ways. A, a company that exists with a certain company culture that they refuse to let go of because that's just how we've always done it. And that's where, for me, the level of concern that I bring to products that I use, it gets raised because it's like, well, when people tell me, well, that's just how they've always done it, or that's the way that this company is, and that's how this company made all of this money, it goes, great. But that's like saying it's okay that they made these decisions, even though it hurt a large group of people or it excluded a large group of people in the discussion. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of Text Expander, my most used productivity utility. It's hard for me to imagine me not using Text Expander, and therefore it's almost as hard for me to imagine you not using Text Expander. Text Expander lets me type a snippet of text and have it turn into a word that I frequently misspell, a sentence that I repeatedly type, or a paragraph that I often need to use. Or it might turn into a block of code for publishing Mac Voices. Or just about anything else that I need to use repeatedly and that I need to have entered correctly. The convenience is the cake, but the accuracy is the icing on the cake. Without the accuracy factor, convenience isn't very convenient since I would be wasting time going back and correcting and recorrecting what I entered. Everyone I've ever introduced TextExpander to has loved it, and I know you will too. 
But there is some lingering doubt, right? There always is. Let's get you over that by having you visit textexpander.com slash podcast and sign up for a 30-day free trial. No credit card required. You will have your first snippet created in minutes, if not less, and be on your way to a Text Expander enhanced future. Textexpander.com for a 30-day free trial. Do it now and tell them that I sent you. Text Expander is made by Smile, the creators of world-class software. Thanks to Smile for their support of Mac Voices. The and the only the only response I can give to that is that sometimes the decisions are going to be made that still you don't like or that I don't like. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I I can think of I I don't want to call them out because um, I don't think it's fair that I, I I have decisions that have gone against the way that I want to see things, and I can give, and and I and I don't think I. Un- Sometimes I even understand why they went the direction they did, and I still don't like it. So, but okay, you know that's that's one on that side that goes against me, and and, and I think that's there's a I, trivial there's a trivial topic to that with the idea of one password moving to electron based apps. You know, at the end of the day, it's an app. It's it's not going to change anybody's life fundamentally other than hey they have a password manager and password managers are great and if you're not using one you should and one password is an excellent choice for one but they made a design they made a development decision based on the information that they had and said you know what to us this decision is the right one based on all the things that we care about based on all the people in the room we made this decision uh, this decision and we welcome anyone and everyone to voice their opinion. And some of those opinions, we're going to have to say, you know what? You're right. We didn't think about that. But now we can adjust where our goalposts are. We can make sure. And 1Password has done that. We've talked about how you know Electron apps tend to not have that Apple look and feel. And they said, well, you know what? We will inject some of that Apple look and feel, even though it's not necessary and it's not required. We will inject that into our Electron-based app to make it feel more like a native experience. And again, you don't have those conversations until someone in the room starts yelling. And for me, I, I just seem to be that person a lot of the time. I, 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 uh, I, mean, I don't want to go too far down that road because we've already beat that one to death on Mac Voices, and we probably will again. Um, but th- I guess I... I, I would rebut that by saying, you, you know, a lot of voices are the loudest voices in the room. And, you know, it gets, they made, as far as I'm concerned, they made yet another business decision to say, we're sticking with Electron, but we're going to address some of these concerns. So, mm-hmm. because we didn't know they were that important. Now, the question becomes in my mind is, were they really that important? Or is it somebody just got their back up about, you know, you're using a platform that I don't like and therefore you're horrible and and you know you you should be run out of town so i think i think that that's a valid concern is like okay hey if we sit there and make every concession to everybody in the room that wants to shout well again this goes to that kind of that scalpel analogy what do we do well one we start to build trust with people in the industry two we make sure the industry is diverse enough to begin with um i think that that's one of the things that you know, going back to productivity and conduit, I love the fact that our show represents productivity from two people that have very strange jobs that are from different walks of life that have different life situations happening. And we cover a lot of diversity points and the areas that we miss, we often will source out to people from those communities of like, Hey, what is it like for someone with certain disabilities or certain mental health issues to to do these things. We can't speak to them, so we get their opinion and we, we want to vocalize what they're saying. And I think that that's where companies tend to struggle, is that they say, well, what we do is the way that we do it. And it's like, that's fine, but also know that by making this decision, you are putting a group of people who don't have a voice available. And the, there's two ways to fix that. One, the company listens for those smaller voices. And then two, the companies do more 
to amplify those voices and make those people also among the loudest people in the room shouting. And I think that that's, that's where the conversation has to go towards. You know, we talked about what's the press going to do? We'll say, well, why don't we start punishing the press for the, this, the bad decisions that they're making? We know why they do it because it sells. Well, when we, why don't we reach those people that they're selling to and say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing this and here are the reasons why. And we're not going to change everybody's mind, but we don't have to. We just have to change enough people's minds so that it makes a big enough impact. And we've been seeing that happen more and more and more. And some people call it cancel culture. Some people call it other stuff. Some people call it social justice or whatever it is. What I see is the ability to drive about the change that you're looking for by showing enough people that the things that you care about should matter. And honestly, if I'm in the minority in that group, if I'm, if I'm not a large enough percentage point for that to matter, then that's fine. I have to keep working on it. The problem is that number is different for every company. And that's where we have to figure out, okay, how do we make those numbers balance? How do we make sure that when Apple or Microsoft or Google or Netflix, they make a decision, it's not at the detriment of a large enough group to say, hey, you need to be thinking about them. You know, accessibility is one of those things that we've gotten really good at. The government has accessibility standards. We say at the bare minimum, you should be doing this. And if you're not doing this, we can hold you accountable. See the lawsuit that Domino's had. Uh, but if if we don't say, okay, this is a great job. How do we move the goalpost forward? Then eventually these companies rest on their laurels and they say, well, we're doing enough. We've, we've done the bare minimum. That should be enough. You should be happy with just that. I can't figure out how we got from, from Conduit, the show, to this discussion. Here's how. And I, I can tell you, and I, I set this all up. It's, it's like magic. Mm, yeah, I've been victimized. Productivity and technology are more about the tools. They're more about the system names. They're more than whether or not you got the thing accomplished. Uh, we talk about this a lot. If I am struggling to thrive in the ecosystem that I'm in because of whatever decisions that were made at my detriment, I am inherently less productive. If I can't think about how I do this task the most productive way possible, or the most efficient way possible, or whatever it is, because I'm having to stress out about some announcement that just came out that makes me worried about owning a device with a certain logo on it, then I can't do my best work. All of the stuff is connected because you mentioned these are difficult questions. These are complex questions. We're a difficult species and a complex species. So what we have to do is start focusing on how do we make the most productive decision given all of the factors, given as many of the things that we've seen. And that's where conduit comes in because instead of saying, here's the five steps to use to manage your inbox, we can say, Sure, there are tools out there that will help you, but let's understand how you got here in the first place. And let's start to look at how we can put some things in place to make sure that we don't get to this point again. And whether that is saying, make sure you have a nice cup of coffee with you, or make sure you don't check your email first thing in the morning, or all these other productivity tools that we talk about, or these different hacks that we have. We say, what has worked for people? Who's been in this position before and how do we how do we learn from the lessons that they've compiled and let's show people how we do it and encourage them to explore and mutate and manipulate that advice to work for them. And I think one, if we do that on an individual level, we get more productive employees and more productive individuals. If we do that on a company level, we get a broader and more accepting company culture that takes all of these things that we've talked about into account. And if we do that in the podcasting industry, well then Chuck, I don't have to go on Mac voices anymore and play the hill. I can just sit there and have fun with everybody else. Well, I hope you're having fun with everybody else anyway. I, I am. It's just my level of fun is sometimes at the, 
yeah, disdain of others, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if I want you to do two things. First of all, I want you to to check out Conduit. Um, I, I think Jay has some really interesting perspectives here. I, I've contrary to what you might believe, I do enjoy discussing and debating things with him because I. I'd like to think maybe I get him to see my points of view. He gets me to see his points of view. Somewhere in the middle, we grow a little bit. Second thing is I want you to tune in on, on Tuesday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern to Mac Voices Live. Jay is there pretty regularly. I know he just, le- as we record this last night, he had some computer troubles and, and had to bow out. But um, we'll, he'll be on there telling me why I'm wrong, and I'll be telling him why he's wrong. And it's very entertaining at the very least. So... Um, Jay, what, what, what's the website for, for, well, I should say this way, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you and to sample Conduit? If you want to check out Conduit, go to relay.fm slash Conduit, like it's spelled C-O-N-D-U-I-T. Um, the running joke is we con do things uh, with our own productivity system. There will be puns. Um, anything with me will involve puns. I'm a dad. I wear my new balances with pride. Um, that said... I, I will also resonate with what Chuck was saying. If you want to get in touch with me, KJAY Miller on all the socials that I'm on, which are all the ones that are not owned by Facebook. Uh, see there, voting with my wallet. Um, and then last but not least, I, I love going on Mac Voices. I know I'll play a role there. We're always ripping and roaring and having a good time in the Slack channel afterwards. Um, we're all friends, regardless of how we may appear. Um, again, just think about it as uh, the weekly wrestling episode about Apple technology that you've never thought you wanted, but for some reason you can't get enough of. Okay, I'll accept that. That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> Jay, hey, this has been a lot of fun. We got we have to do this again. And uh, maybe once this comes out, some of our friends on the panel will have other comments for both of us. So we'll see how that goes. We may, we may, both, get, we may both get roasted on that one. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. It's all about, I guess, growing and your productivity, your thinking, being aware of things around you, and being, I guess, a better citizen of, a better better digital citizen of our times. So I think that's what this was about, and I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.